everybody. <laughs> I am in the recording studio. Love and Laughter Music Recording Studios. Hello. This is great that I have an opportunity to be in the studio here in my own studio. Uh, but I'm reading my book. It's called The Crazy Brave Songwriter. And um, I poured my heart into it for like four or five years now. Um, so now I'm at this stage. Um, so I'm finding this to be um, a little more tedious than I thought, but that's okay. It's got my heart in it and um, it's been a bit emotional. I've got my laptop version. I've got my paper version. I've got my tea. All vocalists and speakers should have tea. And I've got my water and then I have a great um, producer here who's helping me lay it all down and telling me when I suck and how I could be better and to make it all shiny and beautiful. So I love you guys, mwah, and I look forward to you guys reading it, and um, I'm hoping that it'll be of great value to you as it's been my heart to do it. So um, love you so much, and um, see you later. The Crazy Brave Songwriter, a spiritual guide to creative songwriting. Read by the author, Lisa M. Arreguin. Additional narration by Joey Arreguin. Prelude, your song is calling. I remember banging on the piano for hours at the geeky age of 13, lost in the euphoria of the keys under my fingers and flabbergasted by how I could create some sensible harmonic tones. I was always secretly thankful to my family for not telling me to pipe down because I don't think I could have granted myself the same grace if I were my own kid. They didn't encourage me to play more music, but they didn't stop me either, and I liked it that way. After hours on the piano, I would feel spent and happy like one feels after a big Thanksgiving meal. I had found buried treasure, and I felt sorry for people who didn't have this thing called music in their lives. Music allowed me to dream of better days. I dreamed of playing keys with a band, writing songs that would change the world, and singing to millions. I dreamed of philanthropy, touring in faraway places, and delivering brilliant Grammy award-winning acceptance speeches. I wish someone had known 40 plus years ago how to help a kid like me. Although music was a soothing companion in an otherwise lonely existence, my young creative mind continually struggled to understand how to live in a world that didn't seem to understand me. It would have come in handy to know why fourth grade mathematical fractions made no sense or why my thinking resembled shuffling car radio stations instead of focused cruise control. It would have helped to know that I wasn't stupid or misguided and that I could actually do something special in the world. But in the 60s, when I was an impressionable kid with low self-worth, no one had discovered ADHD yet. There was no scientific framework for how creativity impacts our personalities or how those with creative brains change the world with their different way of thinking in business, education, and art. Despite it all, I had a secret weapon, a safe refuge, a place of serenity where I could go. Music was my companion, my boyfriend, my parent, and my pastor through my childhood and into my 20s. I knew I was a lucky girl. Then my 30s hit. At the time, I was a single mother in the 1980s, working 40 hours a week and going to school. I had no time to think about working on my dream of becoming a songwriter and singer. Plus, the process of living an adult life wasn't easy. Time, in particular, was a daunting proposition. Wake up on time, get your kid to school on time, be to work on time, pay your bills on time, work full time. Sadly, over time, life without music was so suffocating that I forgot it meant anything at all. Then the unthinkable happened. I got sick, real sick. I didn't realize the serious nature of what was happening to me as I went from doctor to doctor. After all, my modus operandi was to engage in numbing whenever things got bad. Over the years, I had become like the walking dead, completely unaware of what was going on with my feelings, my body, and my world. I didn't really get it until a doctor with extreme poor bedside manner explained it all in real terms. Let me put it to you this way, Lisa. Unless you have this procedure done today, you have an 85% chance of getting uterine cancer within the next five years. Pause, slow motion, panic, numbness. 
Through blurred tears, I asked God to tell me what the hell was going on. How can this be possible? I am only 30 years old. Almost instantly, I heard an answer. Not an audible voice, but rather a knowing, a full-body response, a tingling that resonated from my head to my toes. Because you are not doing your music, the voice said. I understood immediately. I even remember shaking my head up and down and saying out loud, Oh, that's why I'm sick. You see, sometimes life brings you to your knees and requires that you make a choice. If you listen carefully, or are forced to listen carefully because some doctor just told you the truth, you will know what to do. For most of us, the problem is not what to do when we are standing face to face with an impossible situation, but how to have enough courage to confront the internal voice that shouts, it's time to step it up, the old stuff doesn't work anymore. It's almost like an addict who can't find the next needle fix and is forced to entertain some other option. I had been thrust into a new world, and I was scared. No more excuses allowed, I told myself. After all, my health and my life depend upon it. Flash forward to now. I am a voice coach, singer-songwriter, and a recording artist holding a master's degree in psychology. I am married to an amazing music producer, own a recording studio, run a vocal coaching business, support indie artists through music marketing, write songs professionally, and occasionally teach at the college level. Most important, I work with magnificent people striving to honor the music that calls to them from just below the surface, and life is grand. When I work with songwriters, I encourage them to become aware of the music inside of them first. In that quiet place, I ask them to be honest, to forgive themselves for what they think they should write about and for what the music business seems to want from them to be willing to look deeper, to give the art of creative songwriting some serious attention, and to not give up, because their lives just might depend on it too. I have a deep personal yearning to let them know that they can do it, that it's really not that hard if they understand a few fundamentals. I have seen wide-eyed artists enter our studios with only a dream in their heart, and they come out the other end with great songs to share with the world. I have witnessed bold transformations, courageous artistic breakthroughs, and daring personal examples of psychological and emotional growth as these artists commit to the time to write. When you write a good, solid song that mirrors your heart and is well-crafted, the feeling of accomplishment is so intense that it feels like being in the room when a new baby arrives, like floating in an air balloon, or like being blissfully in love. The journey you take within your own spirit will be well worth the effort. I recently watched an interview with the author David Brooks, who writes about the nature of human character. He spoke about love and explained that sometimes we get our loves out of order by putting things before people, populism over friendship, or the job over our heart's desires. I hope this little book of mine helps you get your loves in order by pointing a finger back to the deepest part of your spirit, the place where the music is calling you home. What does it mean to be crazy brave? When you hear the term crazy, our first thoughts might be of someone who is mentally unstable, like the guy who talks to himself on the street corner, or the certifiable crazy person who was just admitted to the local asylum for erratic behavior. In our culture, we loosely use the term to describe anyone who displays an action that registers outside the bell curve of normal behavior. We might consider people to be crazy because of their willingness to break the rules, think a certain way, and quit a good-paying job. We might consider them crazy because of the funny mismatched clothing they choose to wear. Throughout history, there have been a wide range of creative pioneers who chose to buck conventional wisdom and conformity. Because of their innate courage, they changed our global cultural identity by daring to suggest that we do things differently. An unfortunate consequence for creative innovation is that it is all too often met with a backlash from others. People who label creatives as dangerous, odd, out-of-the-box weird, frightening, and strange. A psychologist friend of mine uses a technique to help her patients change negative thoughts. She calls it reframing. Reframing is fundamentally an intellectual and emotional perspective shift, which involves a new way of looking at an event in a way that isn't harmful to self. 
The great innovator Steve Jobs seems to have understood the power of creativity and the need to reframe our thinking about crazy creativity per his 1997 Apple TV advertisement. He said, and while some may see them as crazy ones, we see genius because the ones who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who do. The crazy brave philosophy is a way to reframe our deepest fears and rethink old ideas about what it means to live a creative life. Artistic pursuits begin first and foremost with the process of deep self-examination. Bravery is a natural byproduct of this inner examination as we connect to the divineness in the deepest parts of our creative selves. As you work on discovering the strength of who you are, don't be surprised if you are called to make brave new moves in your personal or professional life so that your creative energies can be more fully used. I believe that you can live a happy, rewarding existence by using the natural creative power already inherent in you. I believe the crazy brave philosophy will help to keep your creative life steady, productive, and moving in the right direction. The Crazy Brave Songwriter's Journey, How to Use This Book. As with any creative attempt, each artist has a personal reason for beginning. Perhaps deep down, you know you can write songs that others will love. Perhaps you are longing for some creative fun and love a challenge. Or perhaps years ago, you abandoned your music disillusioned by an industry that chewed you up and spit you out, and now you are ready to come back to the music and your calling. Whatever the reason, the creative act of songwriting holds the potential to bring you a greater sense of clarity about who you are because it is a highly spiritual endeavor. Of course, songwriting can be a difficult process for this very reason. That's why this book not only addresses the approach to writing a good song, but it also addresses specific issues, obstacles, and pitfalls that all songwriters encounter, giving a voice to those who feel alone and mystified by the process. Most songwriters have no idea why they, number one, have many pieces of unfinished songs sitting in a drawer somewhere. Number two, feel confused and paralyzed, unable to move, and scared to death to write what is truly in their hearts. Number three, get stuck in the writing process and don't know what to do next. Number four, suffer from feelings of inadequacy and fear, comparing themselves to other great songwriters out there. Number five, Collaborate with other musicians only to find that there is miscommunication and disappointment in the process. Number six, waste money, time, and energy on developing songs that don't turn out to be what they envisioned. Number seven, feel so overwhelmed and frightened by the music industry that they choose to give up the dream of writing anything at all. The primary purpose of this book is to uplift, encourage, and assist songwriters in accessing a deeper connection to the songs they write. This book is for the crazy brave songwriters who are just beginning and want to challenge themselves to achieve something beautiful, creative, and new in their lives. Want to write songs for the world to hear despite what others may think. Might be frightened to move forward, but know that they must honor the nagging pressure they feel in their gut that says, do it are searching for creative authenticity in the music they write, wanting to feel the love of music again. No matter where you are on the songwriter's journey, I wrote this book to inspire you to trust in the unfolding of your own creative process. Crafting a song is not about the notes on a piece of sheet music, a flurry of melodic lines on your instrument, or the accolades you might receive from adoring fans, although these have their place. This book is about crazy brave courage and challenging yourself to move ahead on a sacred path of self-discovery using the powerful creative medium of songwriting. If you look at the way this book has been written, you'll see that it's been designed to walk you through every part of a traditional pop song and through the songwriting process. Number one, spark, whispers of inspiration, the intro. Number two, listen, capturing the story, the verse. Number three, form, building with song structure, the pre-chorus. Number four, feel, what hooks me in makes me stronger, the chorus. Number five, connect, the art of connection, the bridge. Number six, fly, letting go and trusting, the chorus returned. Number seven, return, coming back home, the coda. 
In each chapter, I discuss the purpose of each structural song part and how to craft it, address the common challenges and pitfalls I see most songwriters face in that phase, and offer lessons, tools, insights, and action steps, called song food, to help you navigate your way through the process. As you work through the stories and sections, I suspect you will feel increasingly clearer about the songwriting process and encouraged to keep going. Although you might enjoy reading from cover to cover or chapter to chapter, this book is just as effective if you open it up anywhere and work through the stories. Please take your time digesting these personal and professional stories from my own songwriting and coaching experience because they are meant as a meditation into your own process. There is no rush, so don't be in a hurry. Let the story seep into your soul and speak to you as you contemplate your next move. The act of crazy brave songwriting is about finding the song that is within you. It's about having the willingness to observe what is musically in your heart and the courage to express those thoughts and feelings to a world that is hungry for your personal expression. I pray that in the pages ahead, you will find your song, discover a piece of your heart, and lean into some happiness. Welcome to the journey.